Good luck. Merhaba arkadaşlar, hepiniz IFT Tox webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün Londra'da yüksek lisans programlarının için Goldsmith University of London'dan Jake bize bilgiler veriyor olacak. Lütfen sorularınızı questions kısmından sormayı unutmayın. Yes, Jake, the stage is yours now. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining today. So my name is Jake and I work for Goldsmiths University of London. Um, before we start, I've put some information into the chat window. So there's my name, my contact details, so my email address and my work mobile phone number. So if you want to get rid hold of me on WhatsApp or iMessage or Telegram or anything like that. There's also some useful links to the Goldsmiths website. So our course finder where you can search for programs. There's a link to our YouTube channel. Where there's lots of um, great links to see videos from our students and see the experience at Goldsmiths. There's a virtual tour you can take, information on accommodation, scholarships, and also separate English language requirements. This is just some of the information you you might need um, when you think about studying at Goldsmiths. Um, but I'm going to present Goldsmiths to you now. I'm just going to share my screen. So uh, here's my presentation. But yeah, I'm going to present Goldsmiths to you now. So hopefully there'll be some information here that you would uh, need or find interesting. But if you've got any questions, my your contact details are on the screen now. But again, they're in the chat window. So feel free to reach out to me if you do have any questions. I'll be more than happy to help. Likewise, use the questions panel here and I can answer them later as well um, if you have them today. Okay, let's get started. So I've got some quick facts for you about Goldsmiths. We're founded in 1891 um, and we've been part of the University of London since 1904. We're a single site campus in the heart of Southeast London. We have over 10,000 students that come from 140 different countries around the world. We're considered to be one of the UK's top creative and political universities. A good example of this um, and how sort of we think about society and how we can help um, is the university has what's called a Green New Deal. So we're committed to becoming carbon neutral by 2025. As a university, the subjects that we offer focus on creative arts, entrepreneurial business, computing, psychology, social sciences, and humanities. The people that we've taught have gone on to be quite influential in their fields. And I can go through this um, a bit later with you and talk about some of the alumni that we've had. And just um, to sort of, uh, sort of state as well, I'm going to present Goldsmiths to you. So we've got some facts here, um, but also, and we talk um, a little bit mainly about postgraduate programs later on but I'm going to present Goldsmiths uh, living in London and things like this as we go. So London itself is quite a big city 620 square miles 9 million inhabitants and um, it's not one of the biggest cities in the world places like Tokyo, Seoul and South uh, in South Korea and then um, uh, Sao Paulo are much bigger but it's still quite a big place. Um, we've got 250 um, different museums that cater for all different tastes from history through to photography and art and everything in between. Um, the people that live here, there's actually 240 different nationalities who speak 320 different languages. So it's a very diverse place. Um, there's so many people from all around the world. Almost every country in the world is represented here. So there's quite a lot of different communities and cultures to experience, to make friends with, uh, to learn from um, and share your ideas with as well. It's quite an amazing place to be. A good example of this, um, like thinking about different cultures and things you can try, we've got over 6,000 licensed restaurants in the city. So a good thing you could do when you first move here is to write down the alphabet down the side of a piece of paper, then write a country for every letter you can think of, and then see if you can find a restaurant that serves that type of food. Now, if you use the British English alphabet, you can guarantee for every letter you'll find a restaurant, even Q, the one um, country in the world in the British English alphabet. Um, is Kata and there's a Qatari restaurant in West London. So you can find everything here. Um, it's a very popular place. We have 500,000 students, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and about 250,000, maybe 300,000 of these um, study at the University of London, which Goldsmiths is part of. Um, we have 22 million people that visit the city each year, and that's actually more than New York, Sydney, and San Francisco combined. We've got 500 cinema screens that cater for everything from your big blocks, block, blockbusters like the big Marvel films through to independent cinemas that only show very small films that have very sort of limited releases. We have over 32,000 live music performances that happen each year, and that includes 250 different music festivals. Now, these cater for everything from hip hop to rock music, dance music, anything you can think of. But also we have specialist Indian music festivals, Italian music festivals, even Turkish music festivals. There's everything here for you. Whatever your taste in music is, you can find it here. 
We've got over 100 theatres, and this includes the famed West End of London, where you can see some of the world's biggest productions. So between London and Broadway in New York is where you'll see the biggest performances um, uh, happening, in it, certainly in Western theatre. Um, but also there's lots of um, smaller theatres. You can see lots of new productions as well. There's quite a lot to see in this regard. The city's got five international airports, um, all between maybe a half an hour travelling distance or maybe one and a half hours, depending on which part of London you're traveling from and which airport you're trying to get to. But these airports fly all over the world. It's very easy to get wherever you want to get to. The city is one of the greenest cities in Europe for the number of parks that we have. We've got over 3,000. So um, if you ever need to find some peace and quiet away from the noise and the chaos of the city, you can find a park in every area. You're never really more than about 10, 15 minutes walk away from a park. So you can always find somewhere just to chill out. And also in the summer, it's where we spend most of our time. It's, um, it's really sort of great fun places to be. Um, London is synonymous with sports. We've got um, 19 professional football clubs. And I think about seven of those clubs are in the Premier League, um, one of the world's sort of most famous, biggest leagues. But also it's not just football that we have. We have lots of great rugby clubs, cricket clubs, but then also um, things like the Olympics came here in 2012. The European Championships in football were here um, over the summer. And there's always, always something going on. And also there's lots of things you can take part as well like where the olympics were in 2012 in east london you can now access all of those facilities you can go cycle at the velodrome you can go swim at the swimming pool all different things like this um and also finally London has about 2,000 years of history. It was founded by um, the Romans in AD 49, I think it was. Um, but there was always an encampment here of some kind before that. Um, so there's so much to experience from the history, so much from the present, and also to think about the future, where it's going, and hopefully including you in the future. Um, some of you will know London, some of you have been here, some of you um, may have even lived here, but some of you may have only seen it in films or TV shows. But this map here is pretty much just central London at the top left inside that kind of ring you can kind of see. Um, and then it goes down to New Cross where we are at the bottom right. So like I just said, we're in an area called New Cross with the orange icon where it says Goldsmith Campus. Where we are, it takes about five to 10 minutes by train to get to London Bridge, which is just in the center of the map. It says nine minutes there. So that's that nine minutes is it includes getting on the train, getting off of the platform, getting out of the train station, things like this. But we have two, two excuse me, we have two train stations stations, New Cross Gate and New Cross, and these both go into London Bridge. You've got a choice which line you want to take. They both go there five to 10 minutes and you're at London Bridge. When you get there, you're at the start of the city of London. It's then very easy to get anywhere you want to be. So if you want to go to Selfridges, which is the top left, it's a very big, old, famous department store, and it's near Oxford Circus. So if you wanted to get to Oxford Circus from our campus, it's 27 minutes, um, and then maybe another five minutes walk to Selfridges. So maybe 32 minutes in total. It's really not, um, uh, you know, it's a very easy journey and very quick journey to make. Likewise, if you want to go see Buckingham Palace, where the Queen lives, you can get there maybe in 20 minutes. Or if you want to go to somewhere like Shoreditch, which is, um, it's only, it's, it's written on the map here, Shoreditch High Street. That's a really cool place to go out, especially in the evenings. Lots of the music industry is there. It's 15 minutes from our campus to then cross over the river and get there as well. You can take a train there. So like I said, we're not in the city center. We're outside of it, but it's very quick, very easy to get anywhere you want to in the city center from where we are. So I said on the first slide that we're a single campus university, but this may not have um, made any sense to begin with. Most universities in London have campuses that are spread out over the city. So you may have to travel from one site to another on the other side of the city to get between your lessons or maybe to get to your accommodation, things like this. But Goldsmiths is a single site campus. So that means every building you need to learn from is inside the orange line at the bottom of this uh, photograph. You can see like the collection of buildings and the big green square. That's where we are. So every building, so the lecture theatres, the TV and film studios, the art studios, um, the psychology labs, all different things like this, like our library are inside that orange line. We have about seven accommodation buildings. There's one right on campus, right in the middle of, um, of this photograph. So if you ever stay there, you've never got an excuse of being late to class. It takes you literally 45 seconds to get from your room to some of the lecture theatres. Uh, we've got three accommodation buildings that are just opposite the campus. So you can see these on the right hand side of the photograph, the three orange halls um, icons. Um, so again, a couple of minutes and you're at the campus. 
we've got one that's at the bottom right there's a it says horse and there's a white arrow pointing out of a photograph it's literally a five to ten minute walk it's just outside this photograph so a five to ten minute walk to the campus over on the top left, there's another um, white um, arrow pointing outside the photograph where it says halls. So that halls of residence, that accommodation building is in an area called Camberwell. That's about a 15 minute bus ride away. It's really not very far. It's one road, about 10 to 15 stops super easy to do and then at the top right again there's another arrow pointing just outside the photograph so that accommodation building is actually on the north side of the river in an area called Wapping but Wapping is quite close to Shoreditch High Street so if you remember on the previous slide I said it takes about 15 minutes to get to Shoreditch High Street it takes about 10 minutes by train to get to Wapping so it's super easy to get from that place on from that accommodation building on the north side of the river by train to our campus you're looking at 10-15 minutes and you can be there but looking at this photograph you can see the two train lines so one from new cross gates and one from new cross both going into the city center which is at the top of the photograph we've highlighted some of the um sort of tourist sites some of the things you may want to see around london um but yeah you can see how quick and easy it is to get there and the other thing to point out with this photograph as well is just how green the area is like the number of the trees you can see parks almost like everywhere every area seems to have a park so there's lots of places to hang out lots of places to feel sort of um sort of nature you know whilst you're in the city um so yeah it's quite a lovely place to be so think about the area that we're in as well. So Southeast London and the area in particular, New Cross. So it's quite a dynamic, urban, multicultural part of Southeast London. In fact, it's quite a you know, dynamic, urban and multicultural part of London itself. Um, it's a really sort of lovely residential area. Um, this, the area is kind of dominated by Goldsmith students. So that means there's lots of really amazing art galleries and music venues and bars and restaurants, all different types of things like this for you to experience before you even go into the city centre to see some of the bigger, the more famous places. Places. There's always something really exciting going on in the area, be it street food markets, like you can see the photo on the top right here. Um, so all different things like that. Um, like I said, through to like music um, events, um, different parties and things like this going on. Like I've said before, we're very close to the city centre. So we're in an area called Zone 2. The city centre is called Zone 1. Um, so like I said, five to ten minutes by train and you can be there. There's also lots of really great buses that, um, you know, different bus routes that can get you around the city and to different areas of London as well. So it's very easy to get around from where we are. So onto accommodation. So obviously I've pointed out where they are on the map. So we have um, seven halls of residences and we have about 1400 rooms um, across those accommodation buildings. The buildings have 24 hour security. They have campus support officers and residence experience coordinators. So these are people who will help keep you safe, answer any questions you have, help you with deliveries, show you where things are, all different things like this. For international students, which is you, we will guarantee you a room in our accommodation for the first year you study with us. So we're going to skip to the bottom point on this slide. It says applications open in April 2022 and close in July 2022. So what you need to do first is apply for a program to study with us and receive an offer, either, an, either a conditional or an unconditional offer. Once you've got that, between April and July next year, you can then apply for an accommodation. You can apply for a room with us. So if you are an international student, we'll guarantee you one of the rooms. What these rooms are, firstly, you'll stay in a flat, like an apartment. So you'll share the, uh, the, the apartment with other people, but you'll always have your own private bedrooms. So that's yours. There's a lock on the door. It's just for you. An example of one of the bedrooms is the photograph at the top here. Um, so that would be your room. Most of our bedrooms have their own private ensuite bathrooms. So this means you don't share the bathroom with other people. However, some of the flats do have shared bathrooms. So when you're applying for accommodation, just have it, we have a guide and you can look through the different icons and see, you know, what you want and what's available. So if you want a private bathroom, make sure you apply for rooms with private bathrooms. Um, so like I said, you have your private bedroom possibly have a private bathroom, but then you share a communal kitchen and living area with your flatmates, with the other people that you live with. An example of one of these kitchen areas, the communal living areas is the photo at the bottom here. You can see the table and the chairs and all the work surfaces and the cooker and things like this. So this is your place to cook, to hang out, to have parties, to do whatever you want, but obviously keep it clean and tidy and respect your neighbors. Um, so yeah, you've got these spaces in each apartment. Most apartments have between five to seven um, flatmates in total. So you would be one of them, you'll be sharing with four to six other people um, but some may be a little bit bigger some may be a little bit smaller but there's different options so you can find exactly what you're looking for all the halls have access to coin or phone operated laundry facilities so you can obviously go wash your clothes and make sure everything's clean and tidy 
Um, the halls, the price range from about 600 to 880 pounds per month. And this includes all utility bills. So internet, electricity, water, and gas. This also includes the cleaning of the communal areas. So that means the kitchen area, but obviously you should be trying to keep that clean and tidy yourself as well. Um, this also includes basic possessions insurance. So if you're bringing basic things like your clothes, like your phone, your laptop, things like this, that should be covered. But if you're bringing anything, anything specialist like a camera or music equipment, you may want to think about taking out extra insurance on top of that. You do get bedding and basic kitchen supplies, but you will need to bring other things. We can go through this later in the year, but you may want to bring other things as well. But also um, each building has sort of different facilities. Um, so like a social study area. So the photo at the top here, this is one of the, the um, sort of social areas in one of the buildings. This is actually in the, um, I think it's in the accommodation building in Camberwell. Um, so you can see here, there's table tennis, there's lots of chairs and sofas to hang out and tables to sort of, uh, you know, do things at. There's lots of places for you to meet other people from other flats. But some of the buildings have a gym, different things like this. Also, the buildings don't include meal plans. So this means you need to buy your own groceries, do your own cooking. This is quite a common thing at UK universities. You can find some places that do do meal plans, but Goldsmiths Accommodation doesn't have this. You don't have to use um, Goldsmiths Accommodation. You can go private. So like I said at the start, we're part of the University of London. So you could use the University of London's housing services database. So um, this is a, a database of private accommodation that you can search through. We would have checked it to make sure it's clean and safe and we can help you with the contracts, things like this. So you can make use of that um, database. We also have a private housing guide that shows you how to do this. You know, Many of you will not have um, rented accommodation in London or maybe outside of Turkey before. So, um, you know, it's a good chance to sort of um, get some help in how this works. Similarly, we also have the Goldsmith Students Union Housing Facebook group. So our student union, which is a student run organization of, run by Goldsmith students, they have a private Facebook group just for Goldsmith students. And people on there advertise saying, hey, I'm looking for a room or me and my friends are looking for a house or we're looking for a housemate, things like this. So you can find people, you can advertise yourself and try and find places to stay. Finally, there's also the University of London intercollegiate halls. So to go back a step, if you take the Goldsmiths accommodation, you'll only stay with Goldsmiths students. If you use the University of London intercollegiate halls, you can stay with students from all the other University of London universities. So this includes UCL, King's College London, London School of Economics, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, the Courtauld Institute of Art, lots of wonderful places like this. And um, they have nine halls of residences that are near the city centre, well, spread out around the city centre. Um, so it's a little bit further away from where Goldsmiths is, but the journey is super easy to make. This includes catered and self-catered um, options. So this means they have meal plans. You can also have, um, you can also rent a place with no meal plan, but they do do meal plans if that's what you're looking for. Similar to Goldsmiths, they have single, double and non-suite rooms available. And the website link is just at the bottom here. However, like I said, you don't have to take University of London intercollegiate halls. You don't have to take Goldsmiths accommodation if you don't want. You can go completely private, but we're here to help. So feel free to reach out if you would like any help with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So onto the actual experience of when you're here. So this is some things you can do outside of um, the programs. So a good thing to think about is joining clubs, societies and sports groups. We've got over 100 student groups and 20, 21 different um, sports options that you can join in with. You can also join, um, so sorry, to rephrase, um, the different groups you can join, the club societies and sports groups, they can be political, faith-based, artistic, multicultural or academic, all different things like this. The point of them is to help, is to try and find people who have the same interest as you. So if you want to find people to play football with, you can find them through these sports groups. If you want to find people um, to talk about um, technology and computer science with, and maybe learn coding, you can do that through one of the societies. If you want to find people to dance with, make a dance group, you can do that through this. Similarly, if you can't find anyone, if you can't find a society or a group that's not, you know, that, that, if you can't find a society or a group that has the activity or the interest that you're looking for, you can create your own group. So you go to the student union, fill in a form, create the group, that's it all done. And then you email all the students say, hey, I want to do this activity, who wants to come with me? And then you'll get replies, you'll find people who have the same interest as you. And it's a really sort of valuable way of making friends outside of your um, outside of your accommodation and outside of your class and just really sort of building on the experience of being at university.
Um, so just thinking about this, like sports at Goldsmiths, we have about 21 different options um, from football, soccer, uh, to rugby, to basketball, to cheerleading, all different things like this. Also, our sports teams compete in the London University Sports League. So if you're looking to play competitive football or rugby or basketball, things like this, you can go and do that. Also, if you want to play non-competitively, you can absolutely find people who want to do that with you. I've got some examples on this page of different groups. This isn't all of them. It's just a few examples, but just give you some ideas of things you can do outside of the class and really sort of like um, make the experience of, um, you know, studying in London, studying at Goldsmiths, really, really quite amazing. So some of the things you can think about, the Smiths magazine. This is a magazine run by students, published by students. So if you're a journalist, an editor, a photographer, you want to be involved in media in some way, you can go do this here. You don't have to be on any of the media programs programs don't have to be a journalism student you, you can just go do it um, but some of the people who are doing it will be those students so you can learn from them you can share different ideas or different things like this we have different groups different support groups like our LGBTQ plus um, students community so it's a really great place to meet other people from this community and you know um, find friends to go do activities with and also help each other um, obviously I talked briefly on the previous slide about learning about computer science so one of our most popular um, societies is Hacksmiths our Goldsmiths Tech Society so these are students who are interested in coding about learning about computers and sharing ideas similar to what I said on the Smiths magazine points some of the students on this program will be from the computer science or the data science program, but you don't have to be in that program. You can be in any program, um, studying any course, and just go to this group and just share ideas, learn from each other, and take part in um, different activities. We have a few different um, religion-based groups. We have our Islamic society, but we also have our Christian and Jewish societies and a few others as well. We have a vegetarian and vegan society. We have a photography society. But then sports, we have things like taekwondo, yoga. Um, we have our women's football team who are actually one of the best teams in London. So if there are any women who are thinking about playing football when they come and study at Goldsmiths, um, this is a really great team to join. You'll beat all the other universities and it's quite quite good fun. Um, we also have tennis and then things like drama as well. Any of you who are thinking about writing or acting or directing or making sets or stages, things like this, you can go be involved in this. Again, there'll be students from our drama programs, but you don't have to be in that program. Um, you can go be involved. They do lots of performances around London, but also around the country. And lots of people who take part in that um, society have ended up becoming actors or directors or writers as a profession. And again, not just from the drama programs, from all walks of life, all different programs, they've gone through that society and gone on to have that career. So this is just a few examples. There are many, many more, but like I said, if you can't find the society you want to join, if it doesn't exist, you can make it and you can find other people that want to do the same activity with you as well. So I'm going to move on to what we actually teach. Um, so what, um, what you can um, study at Goldsmiths and what it is we're trying to do. So these are all the departments we have at Goldsmiths. Um, excuse me. Like I said at the start, we focus on arts, humanities, social sciences. Um, and what this means is basically these subject areas here. So you can see things like art and design. And there's some of our big sort of most famous areas. We have programs like our media, communication and cultural studies departments. We also do things like music. Um, I think that's all for them. Oh, also visual cultures and theatre and performance. Um, those mainly sort of our art side. In terms of humanities, we obviously have um, so sort of management and politics and international relations, law, educational studies and English. Oh, and creative and cultural entrepreneurship. So that's where um, creative and cultural entrepreneurship is for people who are thinking about starting a business, but spe specifically inside the creative or cultural industries. So thinking about music, art or drama, things like this. Inside management is where we teach our business programs. And then finally, the social sciences. This is psychology, sociology, anthropology. It's not listed on here, but it's part of the sociology department, but criminology and different programs like this as well. So our main thing, arts, humanities and social sciences. But what we do inside this area as well is we'll give you the skills to go and be a psychologist. If, For example, if that's what you want to be, if that's the program you're studying, we'll give you the skills to go and get a job as a psychologist. But what we want you to think about as well alongside this is how can we help other people? Almost every program we teach from art to media to history to law will give you those skills that you to go and be the thing you want to be, to go and get that career. But we also need to think about how can we make things better for other people? So what we'll be thinking about representation such as gender and race and um, different um, 
sort of topics, different areas like this, but also thinking about how can you make sure that the people who come after you get the same opportunities that you did, or can they get more opportunities? So going back to the example of psychology, like I said, we'll give you the skills to be a psychologist, to go and get that job. But you could also think about maybe working for an NGO and helping other people in that way, or maybe lobbying the government to change legislation or set new laws that help other people, that give people access to services, all different things like this. So Goldsmiths overall, we're here to help you to get that career that you want, to express yourself creatively, politically, and socially, but also to make sure that you help other people as well. It's our big thing. So these are just the subject areas. These are just the departments. We have a long list of programs on our website. So you can use, there's a link in the chat window of the course finder. You can go through there and find the courses. Obviously, I'm here to help you go through the programs as well. Um, but I'm just going to go through what maybe, uh, why you may want to study uh, postgraduate programs at Goldsmiths. So with us, you should expect to be challenged. We're going to ask you to think in different ways. Think about things that you may have not um, have approached before. Like I said on the previous slide, thinking about in media, why representation matters and thinking about sort of gender, race and class and different things like this. This applies to a lot of our programs. We want you to be thinking and developing fresh ideas and new approaches to your discipline. So you may have learned some things on your bachelor's program and in school, but we're going to push you on. We're going to push you further. You we help um, get some great teaching from the renowned academics and also doing your own research. Um, so working on your own, using our library, getting out there into the world and researching um, the subject area and the program that you're doing. We really want you to be pushing the boundaries, provoke thought and stretch your imagination. So like I said, we want you to be thinking about how can you help other people? What else can we do? Also, you know, what is it you want to do inside that career? But we want to be pushing forward at all times, thinking about new ways that we can do things. Um, also, it's, you know, this kind of approach is why so many of our former students are leading the way in reshaping the social cultural landscape on a global scale. So we've also um, some final things in this area. I've got some um, rankings coming up, but nearly three quarters of the research carried out by academics at Goldsmiths was rated world leading or internationally excellent in the last research excellent framework in 2014. So this is a, um, a um, what's the right word? Like a measurement, like a review that gets done, I think it's every seven years. So there's one that's due out soon, 2021. So the last time this was uh, carried out in 2014, we're considered world leading or internationally excellent. We're also uh, ranked inside the top 10 in the UK for our research intensity. And this is from 2021. So anyone thinking about any research degrees, we're quite an amazing place to be. With this in mind, um, you can see here some of the rankings I've got um, specifically for sort of postgraduate works. So we're number three in the UK for design and art, but in terms of our actual research, we're number third, uh, three in the UK for psychology. We're first in the UK for computer science research. We're number one in the UK for music research. Um, and then also number one in the UK for business and management and second for economics. So I should say this is all for research intensity. So we've kept on missing out that word. But these are our rankings for research intensity and it shows how sort of highly thought of we are. Overall, we're ranked 12th in the world for media, 15th for art and design, 39th for sociology, 41st for anthropology, 42nd for performing arts, 101st for psychology. I think most of our departments are ranked inside the world's sort of top two to 300, somewhere in there. Um, so we're really sort of quite a highly thought of uh, university around the world um, for what we do, both in research, but at undergraduate and postgraduate level as well. It's quite an amazing place to be. So I picked out, um, these are some popular programs. It's not to say that you have to study these or um, you, know, you should come and study these, but these are just what has been popular over the last couple of years with students from Turkey. So specifically postgraduate programs, the students in Turkey have been applying for and studying with us. So programs in psychology like MSc Foundations in Clinical Psychology and Health Services, and likewise at the bottom of that list, MSc Computational Cognitive Neuroscience. We've got a lot, quite a lot of different programs in psychology, but those seem to be the two that quite a lot of people pick. And um, also I've talked about data science in terms of joining societies um, when you're at the university, but our MSc data science program um, is learning about artificial intelligence um, and uh, big data and things like this, and then finding applications for them. What they do on this program includes um, building systems to work inside the finance industry. So a lot of our students collaborate with some of the big banks in Canary Wharf, which is just the other side of the river, but also end up going to work there as well. But it's not all just about finance. We use data science to be able to work in all different industries and different areas. A really great example of this as well, a really sort of amazing use in society is the students from King's College London, 
one of the world's best uh, medicine universities, contacted our data science students to collaborate on artificial intelligence systems to help with Alzheimer's detection. So our students are making systems to help within healthcare. So like I said, obviously, you know, some students do go into banking, into finance, but you can apply this to healthcare, to all different areas of life. There's different things you can learn on that. It's quite an amazing program. Um, we have programs like MA Contemporary Art Theory. This is a theory-based art program. But then we also have, it's not included on this list, but MA, um, MFA Fine Arts, which is our sort of most popular, what sort of biggest sort of fine art programs. So anyone thinking about studying postgraduate fine art, that's the program for you. Um, we also have different areas like computer games, art and design. Quite a lot of time when you see computer games programs, it is about sort of the programming side. We do have programs that do that, but we're one of the few universities that actually does the sort of artwork for computer games. Um, so you may want to think about this area inside sort of politics and um and international relations we have ma cultural policy relations to diplomacy but then also ma human rights culture and social justice ma international international relations and ma political uh, communications as well finally on the list our big design program is ma design expanded practice so this is for students who are interested in graphic design product design interior design fashion design all different things like this you come and study with us for, I think it's about 15 months um, and really work on a specific project that you want to do um, and really push your practice into new and exciting areas. It's a really wonderful program to be part of. Excuse me. But like I said at the start, this is just a couple of examples. There are, I think we have, a, you know, well, actually, I can't remember the number. We have quite a lot of postgraduate programs. So it's worth having a read through. Obviously, feel free to speak to me if you want to go through your options. We can set up an appointment, have a one-to-one, -one, or just talk through emails, whichever works for you. But I'll be happy to go through your choices, your options with us. So some basic admin for you when you think about applying to study with us. Um, firstly, when you apply for a postgraduate program at Goldsmiths, you apply direct to us. You don't have to use an external service or anything like this. Basically, on the course page that you want to study, so the page on our website of the program you want to study, there's a button that says apply now. You just press that. It will open up the application portal and you go through and put your details there. Some of the programs do have deadlines for applications. So on the course page, scroll down and there's a box that says how to apply if there's a deadline it should be in there if you've got any questions about this whether a course has a deadline or not come and speak to me send me an email however um any program that doesn't have a deadline you can actually apply all year long to but i would recommend applying as early as possible some of our programs do get full and they do get full early so i would recommend applying by February or March at the latest, maybe April, um, but if you can apply before then. The other reason for applying as early as possible, not just that the programs get full, is next summer. If you're coming to study with us, you're going to have to sort out your visa to come to the UK. You have to sort out accommodation, sort out your finances, things like this, and get ready to actually move. It can be quite a stressful process. So it's best just to have the application out the way so you can just concentrate on everything else, just make each job smaller. The big thing when you apply to Goldsmiths, especially for a postgraduate program, is your personal statement. You need to explain why you've chosen this program, specifically this program, why you're cho you've chosen Goldsmiths. You need to tell us about your education history, your work experience, and tell us any skills you've learned from those that you can apply on the program. Also, what you need to do as well is talk about, um, it's worth always picking out some of the modules on the program. So it's things that you're excited to learn about and explain how they're going to help with what it is you want to do. And also finally, tell us what it is you want to do. Why have you chosen this program? What career are you gonna go for? How's it gonna help? Um, so think about these things, think about drafting that personal statement soon, start getting that ready. We've got some really good guides on our website. Um, you can, if you type in um, personal statements on the website, you'll find them, but obviously feel free to contact me. I can help you with this. Some programs will need portfolios. So um, our MA journalism program, you need examples of your written work. For the art or the design programs, you'll need a portfolio of your creative work. Um, but it's only a handful of programs need portfolios. But again, you can find this on the website. If you go to, um, uh, it's either the how to apply box or the entry requirements box, you can see the different portfolio requirements on the course page on the website. So as always, any questions, feel free to reach out and I can go through what you need to do for the portfolio and the application with you. We interview for almost all of our postgraduate programs. There's only a couple that we don't interview for. I think it's literally five. So when you apply to us, bear in mind that you will be interviewed um, to get a place. Um, in the interview, 
they normally ask you more about your personal statement. So you need to expand on this, elaborate, think of some more things to say. But there'll always be a question like, why do you want to study at Goldsmiths? Now, it's always a trick question. We don't want to know how amazing we are because we already know. It's just worth talking about why have you chosen Goldsmiths, what it is about this university that's going to help you, and how can you um, help with the culture at the university? How are you going to you know, um, give back whilst you're here? Um, so how are you going to be part of the community? So just think about some of those things. Again, we can go through it closer to the time, but it's just worth having these thoughts in your head now. Got some information on scholarships here. We do have a Goldsmiths International Scholarship. It offers amounts of 2,000, 4,000 and 5,000 pounds to international students who hold an offer to study a full-time program at Goldsmiths in 2022. There is a small amount of programs you can't use this on. So if you use this link on this page, um, or also put it in the chat window um, earlier, um, you can see which programs you can't use on. There's only, it's only a couple, literally a few. We have about 35 of these scholarships to give out each year. So they're just for international students there's two deadlines the 31st of March and the 17th of May you need to make sure you apply by the second deadline at the very latest um, there's no sort of um, rush to apply by the first one but just remember if you apply by the first deadline and you get rejected then you cannot apply again for the second you just get one go each year what we want you to do for this scholarship Firstly, you need to apply for a program. So you have to hold an offer, like it says in the paragraph at the top, you have to hold an offer to study at Goldsmiths. When you've got that offer, we'll send you information on the scholarship and what you need to do to apply. But to tell you now, to tell you basically, you need to write a second personal statement explaining why you're a good candidate for the scholarship, explain your work history, any volunteering you've done, and what it is you're going to do for your future career. Now, the secret is that um, the people who get the scholarship, who normally get the scholarship, are normally the people who tell us how their career is going to help other people. So like I said before, think about what you can do to help other people, how you can make sure that uh, um, people who come after you in the same industry get the same options, the same um, choices that you did. Um, and you know, how can you expand on those? How can you help people have more opportunity? Um, so think about what it is you can do to help other people. But this is for next year, once you've applied and got an offer, um, I could go through it again with you. So as always, I'll keep on saying this, feel free to reach out and I can go through it with you. So we've got some final um, sort of bits to go through with you here. We're almost at the very end. So I'm going to talk about some of the alumni that studied with us. So like I said at the start, I didn't really explain it properly, but Goldsmiths have been part of the University of London since 1904. So I did mention when we're talking about accommodation, the University of London is this federation of 17 different universities. So this includes UCL, King's College London, London School of Economics, the Courtauld Institute of Art, uh, the Royal um, Central School of um, Speech and Drama. I think I've got their name completely wrong. But yeah, yeah, Central School of Speech and Drama, Royal Central, that's it, Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, uh, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, lots of wonderful universities like this, and Goldsmiths is part of this. Um, being part of this means you're part of quite an amazing network. You get to use the libraries at each university when you study at one of them. You can use the facilities at each university, but you'll be part of a network that has taught 55 presidents and prime ministers all around the world, 84 Nobel laureates and six Grammy winners, to name just a few. Their Goldsmiths itself, we have taught people like um, Steve McQueen, who was the first black director to win a Best Picture Oscar at the Oscar Awards in Hollywood, um, America. Um, so he won for the film um, 12 Years a Slave, which was released in 2012. So I think he won the Oscar in 2013. Um, Steve McQueen studied um, fine arts with us. And he's also one of the um, Turner Arts Prize winners. The Turner Prize is the biggest arts prize in the UK. So he's had quite an amazing career and we could not be any more proud of him and all the things he's done and um, if you want to see some recent films that he's done as well if you can access the bbc iplayer you can normally do it using a vpn um, you can see a collection of his films called small acts there's a i think about five to six different films they're amazing and also like i said he's won the turner arts prize as well He's a really amazing artist in his own right. So definitely have a look for his art. When you're in London, you can see some of his exhibitions. Uh, he's really amazing. We've also taught people like the gentleman on the left, James Blake, who's quite a world famous musician. He's won the Mercury Music Prize and the Ivan Novello Award, which are two sort of very big prizes in the UK. Um, so he's um, a, a working musician now. He's released about four or five albums, I think. 
Um, but yeah, he's sort of uh, very quite a big famous musician. We also taught fashion designers like Mary Quant and Margaret Howell. You may have heard of them. Margaret Howell has quite a large chain of um, fashion shops around the world. Mary Quant may be a name that you don't know, but you know her work. She was a designer in the 60s. She studied with Goldsmiths in the early 1960s. But she is one of the people, one of the first people to design and make popular items of clothing, items of clothing like the miniskirt and hot pants. She's the person basically credited with designing the miniskirt. So like I said, you may not know her name, but you know her work. She was super popular back in the 1670s and had quite an amazing career. We've taught some really amazing novelists like Evie Wilde, John Harvey and Ross Raisin, the three people at the top of this um, uh, slide. But there are also people like Simon Hale, Adrian Sutton and Paul Englishby. These are the three gentlemen at the bottom. These are composers who write for stage and screen and they've won almost all the awards you can win in the West with this. So the BAFTA, the Olivier, the Emmy and the Tony. The only thing they're missing on that list is an Oscar, but I'm sure they'll be winning those soon. Um, finally, um, we've actually won, we've, we've taught nine Turner Prize winners, um, and we're super proud of this. We've actually, um, like I said before with Steve McQueen, the Turner Prize is the biggest arts prize in the UK. We've had nine prize winners, which is actually more than any other university. And also we've had 26 um, people be nominated, which again is more than any other university. So students who come and study art with us, you've got quite an amazing career waiting for you afterwards. But it's all very well to talk about prize winners and people have been awarded things and world famous people. But we've taught 336 psychologists, 487 social workers, 882 designers, 7,308 teachers, and 1,804 historians, to name but a few of the people that we've taught. Now, these people may, may not be world famous. They may not be, um, you know, super rich and, you know, uh, well, like I said, already what we said, world famous. But these are people who have gone out there, have gone on to have amazing careers and lives, who help people, who help, uh, you know, change lives, change systems, change society. And these all come together to be part of one goldsmith, which I very much hope you would want to be part of too. Um, finally, to end this photograph, um, I took on a plane um, back from Berlin. So if you ever go to Berlin and you're coming back to London, fly with British Airways from Berlin Schoenfeld Airport to London Heathrow. Um, make sure your seat is on the right hand side at the window and you get this amazing view of central London as it flies through the city. Um, the reason I want to highlight this, apart from me taking the photograph and it being quite a beautiful photograph, is that you can see almost the entire city centre. Under the wing at the top left, you can just about see the London Eye. Opposite the London Eye is the House of Parliament, where the government is. At the bottom right, you can see this kind of castle looking building. That's the Tower of London, one of the oldest buildings in London. It's almost a thousand years old now. Um, so it's quite sort of like, you know, amazing history between those sort of two buildings at the you know, top and the bottom of this photograph. Um, next to the Tower of London, that kind of castle looking bridge, that's Tower Bridge. Quite often that gets called London Bridge, but it's Tower Bridge. That bridge um, opens in the middle to allow ships to go through. Now, all my family's from London. My grandfather used to be the man that pressed the button to open that for ships to go through. Sort of my own sort of personal sort of relationship with this city. Near that Tower Bridge and Tower of London, you can see the glass building on the left. It looks like a sort of shard of glass coming out of the ground. That building is literally called the Shard. That's where London Bridge train station is. So between a couple of these sites, you can see our history. You can see our sort of like, you know, immediate history and maybe our present. But you also think about the future, quite amazing buildings like this and the industries that go on here. But throughout this image, there's different universities, schools, um, areas to live, different finance industries, cultural industries. There's so much to explore in this one area in this photo alone. I mean, obviously, it's quite a big area to explore, but there's so much amazing things, so many amazing things to see just in this area before you even get down to New Cross and see the rest of London. I think London's an amazing place to be, and I do hope you come and visit at the very least, if not come and study at Goldsmiths. So thank you for sitting through this. Here's my contact details again. Um, they are also in the chat window if you want to copy them out. You can email me. You can message me on WhatsApp, iMessage, Telegram, anything like this, um, but also feel free to not contact me if you don't want to. Um, there's our, email, um, our website address. And the final thing I want to show as well, just to highlight, there's our Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, but YouTube is probably the best one to go to. I've included the link again in the chat window. Um, there's also really great videos showing our campus. Um, there's also tours done by students and they explain the departments and the work they do, all different things like this. Um, so I think it's a really good place to see um, the university if you can't come and join us in person. So again, thank you for coming today. Um, and I've been Jake. If you've got any questions, I'm going to go through the uh, questions tab now, um, but feel free to write them in um, as well as we go. OK. 
Okay, I'm going to go from the bottom up. <clears throat> there you go. The first question is, what is the GPA requirements for finance master's program? Is it possible to get acceptance with um, lower than a 2.5 GPA? Um, so let me uh, find it. So more often than not, our entry requirements are um, a 2.7 um, GPA. Um, if you do have lower than this, what we would look for is um, extra work experience you may have um, or um, any sort of thing, anything like this that can be validated to go alongside your require uh, to go alongside your um, academic achievements. That's the word. Um, so, yeah, 2.7 is usually the entry requirement. So 2.7 GPA out of 4.0 overall. Um, but if you, if you do have less than this, speak to us. Um, you can um, email me, we can go through it with you um, and we can find out if there's another route for you. Um, so the next question is, can we get conditional acceptance if we can't get or uh, take the required IELTS score? So it's a really good question, just to explain the process of applying to a university. Um, you can apply if you have all your documents already. Um, and also you can apply if you have none of the documents. What you basically need is to fill in the application form and have a personal statement. That's the main thing. If the course asks for a portfolio, you should have that as well. So if you don't have any of the documents, let's say you haven't taken the IELTS, you can apply and we'll give you what's called a conditional offer. And the condition will be to get the IELTS with a certain score. You'll see this in the letter, it'll say conditional offer, IELTS, and then it will tell you what score we need. Um, that applies also if you've not finished school or university. So if you don't have your final grades yet, we can give you a conditional offer that says achieve this in your exams, something like this. So you then just have to meet that and then send us the transcripts. And for the IELTS, there's lots of other tests you can take. I think I included in the chat, um, yeah, English language requirements. So in the chat window, um, there's a link there, English language requirements. There's a long list of alternative qualifications we can accept in place of taking an IELTS. So you may already have a qualification that proves your level of English. So go through that list, work out what you've got or maybe what you need to do, and we can go from there. Similarly, uh, I'll keep on saying this. If you've got any questions um, after this, feel free to email me and I can go through it with you. Um, so the next question, um, are we able to work after the graduation? Is there job placement help for graduates? Um, so yes, so firstly, the UK has changed the rules over the last maybe year or two. So now you can stay in the UK for an extra two years after you've graduated from the, the university. You have to apply for a new visa, um, but it's a really simple process. You have to also pay for healthcare, things like this. Um, so it's basically just repeating what you did to get the student visa to begin with. Um, you can stay in the UK for two years, you can work in any job anywhere in the country, it's totally up to you. At the end of the two years, if you want to stay, you need to get a company to sponsor you for a new work visa. That's one of the routes, but it's kind of the main one. Um, so a good place to think about working is London. There are lots of organizations here who can sponsor you. There's lots of different options. Um, but yeah, you've got two years. Goldsmith has a really great careers department, so we can help you find work. And also during a lot of the programs, there's lots of practical work as well, working with companies, with organizations. So you'll be building a pretty substantial network yourself whilst you're studying with us. Um, so yeah, like I said, we have the careers department who can help you, but then also um, being part of the University of London. So like I said, we're in this federation of universities. We have the largest careers website in Europe. So the University of London has all these prestigious um, universities that are part of it. People all around the world know how good the students are coming out of Goldsmiths, coming out of the University of London. So this website is just filled with jobs, um, you know, job adverts. So you can apply for them. You can get help in applying for them. Um, I didn't study at the University of London. I didn't study at Goldsmiths. But you, as a Goldsmiths student, you'll be able to access that website. I can't do it. Even though I work at Goldsmiths, I can't access the website. Um, so yeah, there's lots of opportunity, lots of help for you as well. Um, the next question, what is the minimum GPA requirement for data science? Is it possible to get acceptance of lower than 2.5? Um, I mean, it's a question from a different person, but the answer is still the same. Um, the, the usual GPA requirement for our program is 2.7. Um, you can go through our website and see the UK scores, but if you've got any questions on what the entry requirements are, email me and I'll go through it with you. Um, if you um, 
like I said before, if you have lower than 2.7, talk to us, you explain the reason why, um, maybe you've got work experience that can help, we can do different things like this. Um, the next question, what is the conditions for joining computer games program or the GPA needed for the entrance? So again, 2.7, um, that's usually the one. There's quite a few questions about GPAs. So 2.7 is the main GPA that we require. But if you have a look on the course page of the specific program you want to study, the entry requirements are there and also I can help you as well. Uh, the next question is, can we have a chance to do internships while we study? So some programs do have work placements. Um, we don't do them the same way other universities do them. So you may see at some other universities, you can add an additional year to your program and go and work in internships. So if you're studying a postgraduate program or an undergraduate program, you add a year on and you go and work. We don't do that. We do have one or two programs that do do that, but we don't do that mainly. What we prefer to do is two different things. One is that the briefs, the projects that you work on, most of them are live. So especially in the design programs, external companies come in and set projects for you that you, you work on and you build. So you're doing live work out in the real world whilst you're studying. The other way we approach things is we do do work placements, but they're not a sandwich year, they're not a full year. You go and work somewhere during a module. So you'll work maybe for two to, two to three days a week, but then come back and study with us for the other two to three days a week. And we feel this is like maybe a bit of a better approach. Um, it's more symbiotic. So your education is feeding your um, career and your career is feeding your education as well. Also, it keeps the costs down for you. It keeps the time you're at university uh, to a you know a smaller amount of time. You're not adding on an extra year um, and you can get out there and work in a lot uh, you know a lot quicker um but yes there are options on almost all of the programs um, if you go through some, some of the modules listed on the course pages or speak to us we can go through this with you um okay the next question okay could you please um inform about the program fees and also scholarship opportunities on each course page you can find the fees um just scroll down there's a box that says fees and funding and then look in there for the fees for each program um they're different for most programs so just carefully look in there also i've been through the scholarship it's the goldsmiths international scholarship in the chat window i put a link to that as well um but you can also go to our website and type in scholarships um the next question is, do you accept only IELTS? Is TOEFL or Duolingo also accepted? Um, we accept a number of different qualifications. We don't accept Duolingo though. Um, you, um, we do accept things like TOEFL, um, but yeah, in the chat window, there's a link that says English language requirements. You can click that and see the full list of things that we accept. Um, but yeah, carefully go through that list um, and you should be able to find the qualifications that either you have or that you can take. Um, the next question, um, I'm interested in MSc Psychology of the Arts. Um, is it possible to apply with below 3.3? So yeah, our requirement is usually 2.7, the 2.7 GPA. I've said this a couple of times, um, but yeah, it's usually 2.7. But if you have any problems, please email me and I'll go through this with you. Um, next question, do you have a master's degree for sports management? Uh, no, we don't do sports management at all. Um, we don't do any sports programs. There are sports clubs that you can join uh, whilst you're at the university, but we don't have um, sports whilst you study with us. I think um, that is all the questions. I think I've covered them all. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, and I think I've got them all. So if you do have any further questions, um, you've got my email address, my phone number. Uh, fee please feel free to reach out. Um, and I'll be more than happy to take any questions from you as well. Um, yeah, thank you so much for coming today. It's been really lovely um, presenting and uh, taking your questions. I hope that you've found it useful um yeah thank you yes thank you very much for the great presentation and for your answers Jake. it was another great session with you it was really informative for the attendees and also i would like to thank the participants in turkish as well awesome. Aynı zamanda size haftaki webinarımıza da davet etmek isteriz. Thank you very much again, Jack. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Brilliant. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.